she gave us so much background around the why behind everyone goes to Galveston um, that it was, you know, enough for us to go do our own research. We Googled all the information. I mean, we saw that it was, what, over 8.1 million um, individuals just in 2022 alone uh, yeah. visited Galveston. Um, 2.1 uh, billion or $1.2 billion spent in 2022 alone. Hi, I'm Wyatt. And I'm Grace. And you're listening to Our Dad and your host of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sean Moore, and I am really excited about the conversation we're about to have today. I've got Darren and Nina Green on our podcast, one of our or some of our Vodacy family, and they've been going through this process. And I'm, I, you guys know how much I love these conversations with short term rental investors that are diving into the game. Darren and Nina just do- dove into the game, like into the deep end, right? You guys, uh, you guys <laughs> jumped in and, and, and started swimming quick. So welcome to the podcast. We're going to have a lot of fun today hearing your guys' story and some of the, some of the things that you're doing with your property. So thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, no, thank you for having us. Thank Excited. You. Awesome. So we, uh, we were talking right before we got, um, we hit record and, you guys are enjoying a little downtime in the Bahamas before the real work starts setting up this property that we're, we're going about to talk about, right? Yes. Yes, we are. It was uh, already planned, but um, sometimes you, you learn that your steps are, are ordained and, and everything's kind of uh, set for you. So uh, we are, we're totally taking this time because we know the, the work that's ahead of us, you know, coming up to get the setup phase here that we're excited about. So <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, we'll, we'll uh, dive in. So I always love to start you guys by, just getting a little backstory. Let's rewind the clock a little bit. Talk about, you know, who is the Green family? Where are you from? What are we doing? What led us to short-term rental investing? And then we'll dive into there on that, what that process has looked like for you. Yeah. So we are Darren and Nina Green. We're originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, about 12 years ago, my job moved us down to Tampa. So we now live in Tampa, Florida, which we love. And, um, we were a little hesitant to move at first, but the job put us there. And now we're saying we're never leaving. So that's yeah. what kind of got us to thinking about now that we live here in Tampa, um, you know, what are we going to do for kind of vacationing? Right. And so um, we've got a, a pretty, pretty extensive background in kind of the long term rental game. So I bought and sold flipped, fixed and flipped maybe 17 houses or so over the course of, you know, maybe eight, nine years. Um, and so I think for for us. We also just went through this phase where we owned a couple of franchises, didn't quite get the service or the help that we were looking for from a support perspective, Uh, was a little gun shy. And I think you uh, remember me telling you when we first talked that um, that kind of was my hesitation to kind of join any more either franchises or types of clubs or type of, you know, individuals that were really there to assist. But um, you certainly helped us overcome that 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 hesitation. And I'll, I'll even go so far as to say the fear because we felt like we were kind of burned twice. Yeah. And yeah. And so I think the thing for us now that we had sold those franchises, um, we honestly were looking for more for the tax break of just a write off. And I told Nina, I said, we may as well just go ahead and now jump in and get our vacation home. And we were going to look for the mountains. Um, initially, that's where we started. And then uh, no sooner I told her that I was kind of looking, I was already kind of looking in the mountains and then you popped up on my screen. Uh, so you guys did a really good job with your, uh, your remarketing <laughs> campaigns. And somehow I saw Sean Moore, I heard your story. It sounded much like Nina and I, we, we also uh, met in high school. We've been together uh, since, I, since I was 16, she was 17. Um, so just a lot of similarities that we saw with, with you and your story. Um, you know, obviously with your background and uh, the things you kind of went through with some of the previous, uh, you know, um, uh, I guess ventures that you were, you, that you took, that you took place in. And then we, uh, you know, it just, it just felt like it was the right move for us to kind of listen in. And after having a conversation with yourself and Jeff initially, um, you know, Nina was like, Hey, what, what are we going to lose at this point? So we kind of pivoted and all right, let's make this a combination of both our, um, you know, our, get our vacation home, but why, we can get the tax break, but why, why do we? Why can't we have someone else pay for it? So we kind of had that rental experience before, but not short-term rental experience. Right. So we wanted to kind of lean on you guys and your uh, your expertise here. So that's how we kind of got here. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. And and I remember, 
you and I chatting a little bit before you, you decided to take the leap with, uh, and join the Vodacy family. And I, like I told you on the phone, I was like, I know you guys are going to be successful either way with or without us. Right. right. I, I, yeah. the, your background, what you've done, the struggles you've gone through, you know, just being able to always like roll up your sleeves and battle through it. And I love when, when we, and I, I always, you know, just feel so privileged to be a part of that journey when, when, I can meet people like you guys who have done that. And so we had a fun time kind of talking about the glory days back, you know, some of of the things we've done in the past, you know, and uh, now we, uh, we, we have to live that vicariously through our kids and, and, and watch them succeed, which is so fun. Um, And so as you, so, so yeah, you, you like, you started kind of figuring out like, okay, one road leads down to another and it leads down to another. And before you know it, you're, you know, this was back in, end of April. Right. And we're, we're right now, um, middle of June. Right. And so that's, that's when these conversations were happening is April, you guys jumped in and, and like I said, you jumped in the deep end. Right. And so, (laughs) so, so take us through that, uh, you know, that like moving fast stage of the game. Right. Well, so the interesting part, so April 30th, which is Nina's birthday, we were literally getting ready for or um, new edition concert. So I had bought tickets surprised uh-huh. we were going there at their favorite group. And so I was thinking, I was like, man, I just bought these tickets. I got a lot of stuff going on. I remember talking to you guys. I'm like, man, another 9,800 bucks. It was just so much going on so fast. Right. But something kept saying, yeah, I just, well, after speaking to you, I felt how genuine you were. Right. Um, and then I think the similar background, like I said, even from your, your family history to your yeah. background and with basketball, I mean, it was almost like I was speaking to myself. Like, yeah. that's all, you know, it's like, it's like my brother from another mother, as they yeah. say, right? So, <laughs> um, so that, that part, once we overcame that piece, um, I think it was more from a standpoint of, um, saying, okay, we were looking into the, uh, uh Blue Ridge or LJ yeah. area initially, yep. but I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that I don't have all the answers. Um, and when I don't know the answers, we go for help, right? Just like for just with athletics, when you don't know how to shoot your jump shot and something's wrong, you go to a shoe coach, right? Yep. Um, I tell everybody, even Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan, the best of the best have individual coaches to help them do what they do best. And yep. if I am on the other end of not even having any experience with it, why would I not go look for a coach? I.e. the reason why we kind of looked at franchising beforehand. Yep. Um, but I saw this as a better opportunity than franchising because number one, <laughs> Um, you know, the franchise fees are, 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 are much more expensive than what, what it was to join this, the royalties, there are none when you join a group like Bodicey, but then the, um, the exposure to the, um, to the resources. And so one major resource was yourself and then Jacob putting us in touch with the respective realtors. And so once we had those initial conversations, we went through the steps where we had the interview process from your checklist. That was huge for us. Um, and then the other piece that was so huge was the analyzer tool. That's what helped us really move pretty quickly. Um, I think the piece for me in in particular was I could find a particular, you know, I think that for anyone, you can say, you can dream and say, Hey, look, this is the house that we want. But when you, when you start to hear, uh, through the, the trainings, when you start to hear, keep your personal goals in mind, keep your why in front of you, and then also kind of mix the two between the investment piece. I think that analyzer tool helped us to bring it home a little yeah. bit quicker so we can make that decision as to where to start, right? So initially, now when I go back and I look at it, I'll just tell you this. We were looking at a property in LJ, and by the time we got to the analyzer tool, we were like, oh, no, I don't know. So we like, eh, this might be a little more than what we're ready to bite off. And so um, took a stab at saying, Jacob, you got any other contacts in uh, the Houston area? And he put us in touch with Susie Austin, who has been phenomenal. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And so once we talked to her, she kind of gave us some information, led us to uh, where the hot areas were and are. And so once we did the numbers, I mean, it didn't take long at all. We just had to trust the process at that point and, yeah. and just say, this is it for us. You know, keeping those goals in mind, you don't have to continue to second guess yourself. So long, yeah. long, long answer, but um, that's really kind of how we got there. So Yeah, and I think too, for me, like Darren was in a different spot when with the um, classes and the courses. Yep. But I, it helped me to start from session one and going through to really understand the entire process to really make sure that I was involved and get got a very good understanding. So those courses helped me tremendously. 
Awesome. So, so when, yeah, and, and I think that's great because one, we, we all see things through a different lens as well, even mm-hmm. though we're seeing the same processes and it's really fun that you're doing that together. Like I've been, I've been involved in real estate for 22 years now, 23 years now. Um, this is my 23rd year full time. And I've, I've invested in a lot of different asset classes. I've been involved in a lot of different things. And, and I, and I know you guys have invested in some other things as well. I've never seen an asset that really couples, families, you know, do it together, right? They they actually run down that road together. Typically, one person's taking the lead and yeah. and, and it's just strictly a means to an end, right? It's just a yeah. it's just an investment where this crosses over the path where you can make some really, you know, like you mentioned, you're looking at the numbers in LJ, the Blue Ridge area, and they weren't, they weren't lining up the way you wanted because that was a piece of why we wanted to buy the property. It needed to be financially right. stable and bring us in, you know, some cash flow. But right. also, you know, how like when you went back to the, you know, and ultimately in the the Houston area and then now in the Galveston area, right? Um right. the when you mentioned to Jacob on the Houston, because I wasn't involved in that conversation, did you guys already have an idea of the Gulf there in the Galveston or no. what 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 drew you to Houston? So when we spoke to Susie, um, she basically said, you know, it's a it's a pretty flooded market. Um, she, you know, shared with us that um, she'd already helped a few other um, individuals in the uh, in the beach area. She gave us so much background around the why behind everyone goes to Galveston um, that it was, you know, enough for us to go do our own research. We Googled all the information. I mean, we saw that it was what over 8.1 million um, individuals just in 2022 alone at, yeah. uh, visited Galveston. Um, 2.1 uh, billion or 1.2 billion dollars spent in 2022 alone. I mean, that that in itself was just like, all right, this is just in 2022, right? Yeah. In a market that one would say is probably pretty full. <laughs> um, yeah. But we were saying, okay, we find the right deal. Let's go. Yeah. So I think that was yeah. pretty much uh, yeah. kind of how we, mm-hmm. and, and the one piece I will say, we were looking for, we always said we wanted a beach home and a mountain home. Mm-hmm. We were looking in Houston to say, maybe this could be the first start of kind of building some revenue t- to start kind of get there. Um, and then after the conversation with Susie, we we realized, okay, no, we actually have, we can actually get our beach home now. Beach. We don't have to wait. Right. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, are these be is had you guys spent a lot of time personally in Galveston, you know, in in a past life or anything just recreationally? You so the beach, this is a new beach area to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, another piece. So we're 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 now we've been in Florida for you know what twelve years. Yeah. We've done the Panama City. We've done the Destin. We've yeah. done the Myrtle Beach. Being from North Carolina. Yeah. We were like like that's that's not like a it's almost those are like second homes for like right. literally like it's like in our backyard. We want do something a little bit different right yeah um, my, my younger brother he lives in houston so he's only okay. 45 minutes away so that also helped us to say oh man we've got family close by we yeah i'll take that trip and so that's what led us to also keeping the um you know the why and your goals your uh, your family goals in mind because that's when we travel and get like now we're here in the bahamas mm-hmm. it's 11 of us <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah um, you know, and that was, we were supposed to have what another five or six we sure were. family members, Couple but just a couple of things kind of got in the way. And so, um, we're, we're, that's how we vacation and we've been doing that since our kids were young. And so, um, one other piece I'll, I'll tap into when you said that it was a family decision. Yeah. My daughter is telling you to tell them about Diana, the 17, oh, she's yes. 17 years old. So, and even with this process, she's been very involved as well. At 17 years old, she's been all uh, asking all the questions, which made her start looking into real estate herself. And so she started asking more questions. Uh, Darren even took her up to the Tampa Real Estate uh, School. She talked to them and she just finished her first prerequisite uh, real estate course. That's awesome. Um, that is fun. At 17 years old. So, I mean, she paid for it herself. She was ready. She was invested. She did a whole week and took the test and passed her test. Yes. And so she's re- She's like, I'm ready to go to the next piece. And what else do I have to do? So it's very exciting, too, to see that this has actually sparked that interest for her also. And that she's also very involved with us in this process, too. Yeah. So oh, it's that's so fun. Yeah, yeah. It's our pre-licensing course right before. So she'll be 18 in October. So October comes, she can take her Florida license mm-hmm. uh, or take the exam for to get her Florida license for real estate. 
And our goal now is to see if she can sell at least one house before she graduates from high school. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I, just knowing you guys and the family, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, my bet is on that she will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. that, that's fun. It's, it, it is fun. Like, and I, my kids are 12 this year. And, you know, they've grown up around this and they see, they see what we do and, and what we, how much fun we have with the properties and everything else. They're both like just today, Wyatt sent me a property in Murphy, North Carolina in the mountains, <laughs> because he said that I found one that I want to buy. And I, I'm like, well, you got to see if you can afford it. Cause yeah. we're, we're trying to, we're trying to figure it like having them run all the numbers and do all the That's stuff. Right. But, yeah. It's fun when it does spark their interest and we can, you know, it, it teaches so many different things between, you know, the numbers and the discipline of saving up for down payments and Absolutely. what it takes to do all that stuff. It's really, really fun to see your kids get involved in that. And I, and I, I totally can hear that when you guys are talking about it, cause I feel the same thing. It, it's yeah. really, really fun. Well, yeah, no, it's truly really been a family affair. From yeah. start to start. <laughs> well, and let's, uh, let's kind of, dovetail off of the family affair because okay. one of the things that I got, I got chills when you sent me a message that was telling me about, Hey, we're under, we're under contract. Here's, here's our plan with it. Here's what we're going to do. And, and I really want to dive into that story because I always tell people, we talk so much about the numbers. We've talked about numbers on this, on this conversation right now, right? We're saying right. Oh, the analysis and this and that, the other, and there's three major phases that we go through and the acquisition phase is really getting that right property in the right location. And it, right. and you do have to make good, smart financial decisions and know the numbers. That next phase is setting it up to deliver a unique experience. And that phase is all about giving that property a soul, which we're going to talk a lot about here in just a minute. And, sure. and rather than just having a property that we're delivering, because that's not what we sell in this game. We're selling an experience, right? We're sure. selling memories and and for people that are coming you guys are in the bahamas with you said 11 of your family members you know that's how you're traveling and you're going to remember that you can remember the last time you did that with the family right, right. it's yep. that's what we that's what we're buying as a traveler and that's what we're selling as a host and right Sometimes we forget about that. And it's one of the harder things to do, but I want to dial it back because it doesn't have to be as hard as people make it. And then ultimately that final phase of marketing, which is taking that experience and being able to articulate it through the OTAs and through your photos and through your listing website so that people say, Hey, I want to, I want to be a part of that. And, but, but what does 95% to 98% of the heavy lifting is really setting it up to deliver that unique experience. So can we kind of go through the story of how you guys went through yeah. that process and came up with that? Because I loved, I loved yeah. hearing it and I would love everybody else to hear it. No, I think you, you spoke to it. I think the piece for us was number one, I continuously heard you through the, through the, um, the training saying, create your story, right. And create the experience. The two franchises I've had, one was a, like a basketball um, training franchise. And then we kind of moved away from that, created our own. Um, and one of the things I've always been big on is, like the experience, right? I call it the, um, you know, we've always kind of gone, it, everything that we've done individually, we've kind of gone after the, I shouldn't say gone after, our target was more kids and family, right? right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been my experience that people will come if they have a great experience. Um, and if you set that up the right way initially, and then you kind of hold their hand throughout that process all the way through the time they exit your door, um, that's what I kept kind of tapping into, right? We kind of did that before, but we, you know, I was just sitting, literally sitting in bed. It took me 10 minutes to think about it. I was like, you know what? It, like, this is what we do. Like, we, like, who, who we, I, I've always understood in even the medical sales space, there's always a target audience. And so I kept saying, who is it that we want? Who is it that we want? And I was walking the dog. I came back. I was like, Nina, I got it. <laughs> I was like, this is Linda's legacy, which is my mom who everything that we were talking about doing at this house, it just reminded us of these vacations that we're on now, um, how we grew up and just why not have everyone kind of experience that and just like tell that story of like what we did growing up as kids, what we did for my, my kids, how much time they spent with their grandmother um, and just the quality time and the memories, like we're taking picture after picture. Um, I mean, it's just, it's almost like it literally just came to me, like literally for sure, 10 minutes and then I wrote it down, did some editing. And it's like, this is what we're going to do. Like, it's, let's just go and run with it. Right. And the one other piece I'll say is I keep hearing you say, um, 
don't try to get everybody. Don't try to be all things to everyone, right? Yeah. So I don't want everyone. We want families that think like we do, that kind of would want to do what we do. And there's plenty of those out there. We're seeing them here while we're here. And we're like, man, they would be great. They would be, like, we're looking at people like, dang, that's, a, those, those, that's who we want right there. Mm-hmm. Like we're out to dinner. We're like, that's the group we want. <laughs> so yep. we're, we're seeing so many things that we're saying. And we were out at the pool. We're like, okay, no, we got to get the large connect four. There were so many people playing a connect four. We're like, okay, that's family. Look at that family time. Mm-hmm. Like we were playing it. Um, we're seeing so many things now. This has opened our eyes to say, this is what we've got to do to bring these families together so that they can experience it. But we want to uh, articulate that when they initially check in, uh, when they uh, express initial interest, and then also by the time they leave. So long answer, but that's how we got there. Yeah, it's not a long answer. And um, and I always, we always talk about that, right? We I, when we say who is our target audience, I always tell people, you, we're our target yeah, audience, right? right? Yeah, you right. are the target yeah. audience. And yeah. we shouldn't apologize for that. Like there is plenty of people right. that want to have, like you said, hey, there's plenty of people that have the same family values and that time that's so important. And the same, the, you know, the same beliefs that we do when we go spend that time together of what that really means. And ultimately that's who that target audience is. You And we overcomplicate it so much. Like even like, when you were telling me, you know, what, you know, you remember going and picking your, your mom would always go and you guys would pick up seashells and sand and seashells at the beach. Right. Right, And, and seems like such a simple thing, but how many of us have actually done that as a kid? Like I remember doing that as a kid, it's such a fun memory, right? Whenever I, when you, when I read that, I thought back and thought, I remember when I went to California as a kid and picked up and I thought it was such a, such a fun thing to go pick up seashells at the beach. Right. And, and it brought me all the way back to then. And you're going to incorporate all those little things, like you said, from the very beginning of when they inquire about the property while they're at the property. And one thing that I love about it that I, that I want to try to articulate through this conversation for those of you listening is it doesn't have to be, it can be something very simple, like, you know, a mason jar where you give yeah. instructions on going and in, in to the beach and grabbing some seashells and sand. And then here's the cap and take it back with you and remember Linda's legacy right. when you go back. Right. And what the, what time you had. That's 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 it. One of the one of our Vodacy family members, he has a property called the Skydance Ranch. And it's on it's a beautiful beachfront property in the California coastline in northern California. And his entire story was he remembers flying a kite on the beach with his two sons and yeah, the, that's all that. it is right yeah, and it's yeah, yeah. so you take these little memories and and then ultimately they become part of the story and they give that property the soul that we're really looking for to give and add the, to somebody else's experience right and yeah. and be able to share that with them and is it going to attract you know the you know the the spring breakers that are coming to party for spring break probably right. not you know, yeah. but and there's we, other properties that make, yeah. that's not, yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah. probably, it, you know, I always say a great story and great marketing is going to attract the right people and repel the wrong people. Right. Exactly. And, and that's okay. Like, it's not, that's what, that's what you want to do. And so it's really, really fun. So you guys are, we just closed on the property, right? It's been yeah, a week. Literally. Not even no, last not Friday. Friday. Last Friday. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're less than a week. We're, yeah. we, mm-hmm. we're taking the, the scheduled family vacation, which I love. You didn't put that off. It's a priority. Yeah. Right. And, and right. you guys like, you know, we, you know, family's a priority when you talk to somebody. And like you said, you guys have been together since high school and you, you've right. got this amazing family with these great kids and, and everything else. And it's just, so, you know, that that's a priority. Obviously you're going to do that now. The work's starting to, you know, you're starting to plan that out, right? And we're going to say, okay, that next stage is really taking those ideas and and setting the property up to deliver that. Are there things that you're that you're like, are you getting the planning started? Are we are we getting things that we're worried about? Like, I mean, are we are we ready for it? Yeah. So the so Nina knows I'm with this kind of stuff. I'm super <laughs> proactive. Even before we close, I'd already reached out to HOA to see what we can and cannot do in the backyard, right? Because I want to know well before. So two weeks ago. Uh, finally found out that we are able to kind of do what we're looking to do, uh, which is um, add like a little putting green in the backyard. Yeah. That's in memory. Of, I shouldn't say a memory, but it's just kind of reminds us of kind of my dad used to chip and putt in the backyard. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. w- when I went to go look at the area um, during the um, in, uh, the um, the uh, yeah, well, I went to go do the inspection. Um, so I had time to kind of drive up and down kind of the, the coast there and kind of see what's there. And it's, it's really more kind of a private area. And so 
um, kind of once you get there, you're you're there unless you're going to drive another 15 you know minutes away to kind of go get the you know groceries and whatever else that yeah. you, you kind of want to get. And so I kept I called back and I was like, yeah, we got to make sure that you know they can do everything here. Um, like the nearest putt putt is probably another 10 minutes away or so. Yeah. Not that it's super far away, but um, you know, I figured while we were doing our due diligence, let's kind of look and see what we could kind of con- continue to create for that experience. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we were a little nervous about not being able to kind of put artificial, you know, grass or turf in the backyard. That's kind of gone out of the way. Uh, we got approval for that. We now have evolved to now we were just going to do soccer goals. Now we're going to kind of make it a little soccer field on the turf. We got a, um, we got our landscape guy who's able to kind of draw the soccer lines on the turf and, um, we're going to put that out there. Uh, we saw a couple of things here while we're here that we're going to add to the, to the experience. But I think more importantly, this piece of having that story already together helped us to tell the interior design what we really want and more importantly, what we don't want, right? right. The, the interior decorator, I should say. So she's sending us things now while we're here on vacation and we're like, no. So um, we're like, you got to read this story. Like this is kind of what we're trying to pull out, right? Uh, we're from, from Florida with like, to see a heron on the wall, that's not really doing anything for us. We need a right. little bit more of what's yep. in the local area, right? Like, yep. <laughs> um, so I think had we not gone through the courses and spark, especially the right. the design piece, I probably right. would have been like, yeah, okay. To be if I'm being completely candid, like right. put put whatever you want in there. But right, we're really trying to build that story or build the setup around our story, and having that story first helps us to now say. Yes, that's great. Let's keep let's continue with this idea. And more importantly, like I said earlier, no, this is not what we want. So even if that takes a little bit longer, I'd much rather have it, you know, exactly how we want to. So we can kind of bring that story alive, even through the artwork and the, just the yeah. full setup, you know. So, yeah, um, that, that's just kind of where we are. That's awesome. Nina, are you um, was was the property furnished already or was it completely empty? No. It's completely empty. Okay. It's a new build. A new build. So, and so okay. we've been That's working right. with a, an interior designer. That's their local. And yeah. um, she's been she's been great. And so we've been working with her on really trying to see our vision as well. And we've been going a little bit back and forth on the different types of furniture and the settings yeah. that we want to see in the house. And it's good to, and, and, you know, give her a little bit of grace because interior sure. designers, okay. right They they, uh, they design homes for us to live in and they'll typically, they're great with these really congruent design themes and everything else. You have to have that piece, but sure. then you right. want to bring, you know, bring the outside in, you want to bring that experience to life. And sometimes it's different artwork than we would normally maybe put in our own houses, right. Or, right. or right. Our, just our own beach home. And so right. we're, you know, as you go through that, it's great that you have the, uh, the resources to be able to have those conversations because it is important, right. It is, sure. it is ultimately when you go to photograph, uh, photograph this house and, sure. and you look at the photography, it's what's going to bring the story to life is being able to have the, the right kind of artwork rather than just, you know, be, each artwork, we need to have the artwork that actually brings that story to life as well, which in right. and the accessory items and things like that. So it's great that you're that you're planning that out and being proactive with it. I always tell people in the setup phase, the best laid plans always have issues. And yeah. <laughs> you want to make sure that planning is so key during that uh, during this phase, for sure. And having the you know, having local professionals there to help and do all that stuff right. is, is hugely um, helpful for sure. So yeah, What's the timeline? What's the, uh, what's, what's our timeline? I know we were originally saying maybe we could hit uh, July 4th. And I was like, man, that's pretty aggressive. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> yeah. not put ourselves under that kind of stress. No, I think when we, when we initially we said August 1st, but yeah, um, I think when we started to hear how fast they could kind of get furniture in and things like that, we're like, it was like, ah, oh, that kind of felt a little too fast anyway. Plus yeah. we wanted to enjoy it first. Um, the other thing we wanted to do is we've got my brother who lives in uh, Houston, We've got a couple other friends who live in the Houston area. We're just going to get them to kind of, you know, test it out, like do a couple of dry yes. runs, you know, what we've done in the past for like, um, you know, franchises that we've opened up. Yeah. We have, you know, obviously that that little, um, you know, the dry run phase where you kind of get the kinks out. Right. And I, I'm telling them, tell me everything. If you see a piece of, you know, rice on the floor, whatever, the, the, all the good right. and the bad. So we kind of get that out before we get to the point where we kind of go live, if you will. Yeah. Um, so I think August 1st gives us a chance to, like you said earlier, too, um, or on one of our calls, kind of enjoy the 4th of July weekend that, you know, there that'll give us a chance to also see kind of uh, who comes during that weekend. Are we in the right, you know, are we targeting the right folks? Do we need to adjust right. our messaging? 
um, things of that nature. So what kind of adjustments do we need to make, if any at all? Uh, we might be yeah. right there in the ballpark. So, yeah. Nice. So will will it be? You'll have furniture and everything. I mean, we're at the we're mid June right now recording this. You'll have that's that's great that you can get because in the past, it's been tough to get furniture quick. You yeah. know, that's what, we, that's what we were saying. Well, we were second guessing at first, and but the beauty of it is where we were referred. Um, so they're out of Houston, but I think their furniture is in Dallas, right? They're getting it out of Dallas. The furthest point that they have to get the furniture yes. from is Dallas. Dallas, and so it takes anywhere from a six to ten business yeah. day. Um, so that kind of helps us. A That's bit. awesome. Even if it goes past August 1st, uh, if we go into the kind of that second week, whatever it takes to get it right on the beginning part of it is what we don't want to do is start off, have to stop reset. I mean, I think it costs you more to kind of, um, rebrand than get it right. The first time when, when you have time, like, what are we, what are we really rushing for? Right. I mean, right. Right. By August 1st, our, our first, our first payment on this is not until August 1st anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Was, you know, so I think that was the beauty of it kind of closing pretty quickly and kind of where we are now. Um, we've got, we've got time, so no need to yeah. rush it. Awesome. Awesome guys. Listen, I, I hate that I'm even taking any of your vacation time no, and no. spending time with the family. No. And so yeah. I want you to enjoy those, uh, those amazing beaches and waters in the Bahamas, but let's, yeah. uh, I always ask people, you know, at the end of every episode, as you, as you go through this, if you could, you know, I know we're just diving in and we're, we dove in the deep end and we're learning a lot of new things. There's still a lot more, you know, a lot more swimming to do, if you will, yeah, but it's, sure. you know, when, when you dive into something new, we always, we always wonder, would we do it the same way? Would we do it again? What advice would we give ourselves if we could go back? And I'd love to hear from both of you, if you could go back to your younger self and say, here's, here's what I would suggest, or here's the advice I wish I had. Is there anything that comes to mind when, uh, you know, when, if you're, if you're looking back and having to tell your younger self, um, a little bit of advice and knowing what you know now? I'll just start that one. I don't know. I, I would probably say I would do this sooner. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I have I have learned a lot. So just for me, um, going through the courses, I will say because I was not very um, not I, I just didn't know a lot about these this these steps. Yeah. And so that has um, really and I would tell anybody doing it just really go through the courses. And you know I have gone back. I can remember some things. I'm like wait a minute. No, I remember that was in this session. Let's go back and look at that. And I am a one that. I read through as, as the person is speaking, I like to take the notes and read through it with them as they're yeah. saying it. So that has helped me tremendously, but I would just tell everybody, just take your time, go through it uh, step by step, mm -hmm. go back to the steps, you know, just yeah. know that it is there, go back and say, Nope, I remember hearing that somewhere. Let us go back. I think I took the time. Nope. I remember that. <laughs> Let me go back. It's somewhere in here. So i I definitely refer back to those pieces. So really take advantage of all the right. resources that are there. Awesome. Anything to yeah. add to that, Darren? No, I think I think for me, because we were kind of at different phases, I kind of kind of took the lead for the the long term um, rental portion of it. Um, and I think those were, I mean, I, not to disrespect anybody in long term rental piece of it, but I thought that I mean, I think those are just easy numbers. It's right, you know, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, right? Like you kind of figure what that out, figure out what that is. Um, after repair market, like I feel like you can just I, maybe it's because I did it for so long, it just felt like it was easier. But I think for me, I had to slow myself down to say, don't be so quick to jump to the analyzer because Nina's like, hold on, let's wait, let's go back. I was ready to go analyze numbers, see if this is a great fit, mm -hmm. and then kind of go back, you know, to start yes. to, to 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 square one, if you will. Yeah. And when I when I so, so thank God I have her to kind of balance my driver, you know, um, you know, uh, tendencies. Right. So she's like, wait, 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 let's go back. So that's why I'm also glad we're doing it together. Um, it. Because there were a couple that I went to did to do the analyzer uh, tool looked like we we're going to make some good money. But then when we start to put the true um, goals in place, we're like, let's not sacrifice on that. And we kind of backed up, even though we could yeah. probably made a little bit more money on those. Um, it, it would have been a three bedroom. Uh, we were probably going to move forward with a three bedroom, three bath. And we're like, wait a minute. That can't fit David, Derek, right, they Diana. Can't fit like we started naming, we started yeah. saying this will be their room, this will be their room. So it didn't work. Goals, my, yeah, we're like, no, nah, it's not gonna work. And so <laughs> we kind of backed out of it, you know, or I should say backed off of it and yeah. went to more, one that fit more of our property goals, as mm -hmm. you say. So Love I think that would be the key learning for me that I would just say. 
I love it. I love having that North star. You know, sometimes we take for, for granted that it seems elementary or not necessary to really talk about, okay, let's identify those property goals, even though, cause sometimes they just seem so simple. It's like, well, I already know what I want. Right. I don't need to (laughs) talk about that. I already know. Right. But they, they really can help with decisions down the line. And, and, you know, you mentioned the number one thing people always say is I wish I would have started sooner, but I want to, I want to give a little context for everybody listening because you both are saying, Hey, it's how important it is to back up, slow down, follow the process. Because I always say slow is smooth, smooth is fast, the Uh Navy SEALs, right? And Uh um, by following the process, you typically accelerate a lot faster. And so you guys, you know, you come in on Nina's birthday, April 30th. That's when we joined. We're under contract. It was, um, I'm I'm looking at my notes. It was under contract May 15th, right? So two weeks. And then we're closing the uh, last Friday, the the 9th of June. And so pretty a pretty fast process for, you know, being able to dial it, <laughs> dial it all back. So I, I don't, I think I've got two drivers uh, that we're talking about here. <laughs> well, I, well, I will say, I think the, this helped us to go and like, I normally I do move pretty quickly, Yes, but this helped us to say, I guess it just instilled the confidence that we we're making the right, this, you know, yeah. the right decision, right? Yeah. We didn't, we didn't, there was no analysis by paralysis. Oh, should I, is it really, you just you're like this is right in front of us right like yeah. i think that's the people that made it easier to make these decisions if if i could just add to that you had the so steps like to follow a, that's right you do and yeah. even though you're doing the courses it's not like you know i went through them so it's you yeah. know i got into it even yeah. though i was working all day long it's like okay when i got home you did what i had to do at home and i got started on the course and you just get caught up in it mm-hmm. and it's like okay i'm ready for the next one i'm ready for the next one. it was even at times i was like okay on my way to work let me put it on so i can read you know go over that again on my way to work i'm yeah. listening to it love it love it well guys i always always appreciate anybody that comes on these shows and shares their story and their time with us I'm always so grateful and feel so blessed to be a part of so many amazing people's journeys. So thank you so much. I know it's taken, taken that time, but you know, it's, you don't know who's listening and what impact you have when somebody can hear that story. So I'm always very, very grateful. And I really appreciate you joining us on the podcast today. So thanks so much for sharing your story. Yeah. Thank no, you. Thank you for having us. Glad yes. we could help. And we, we feel like it's a blessing to be part of it. So thanks for being a blessing to us as well. <laughs> a- absolutely. And those of you listening, we know how valuable your time is as well. And we always appreciate you share- sharing it with us and spending it with us. If you got any value out of the show, I always appreciate a thumbs up, a like. If you have more than 30 seconds, leave us a review. Those things really do help us. If you're listening on the podcast, go check us out on YouTube. Sometimes just seeing, putting faces to names always is really fun to be able to do and vice versa. If you're if you're on YouTube, you can always subscribe on the podcast, listen to us on your drives, and uh, hopefully we can be a part of your short-term rental learning experience moving forward. And I always leave you with one challenge at the end of every episode, and that is to go pick one thing you can do today to start building that life you don't want to take a vacation from. Cheers, my friends. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey, Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content to Thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.